Hello everyone, welcome to another DSP video. We are gonna watch his Top 10 Worst Things About Modern Gaming Part 1 video. Uh, he has not uploaded Part 2 or uh, potentially Part 3 as of yet, as the, as the moment that, at the, that I'm recording this. Uh, maybe I should wait for all of them to come out, but I want to experience the story that DSP intended to having them all in three separate parts. So let's get started. What's going on everyone? Phil here for KO Gaming. And you know, although we've seen a lot of big leaps and bounds when it comes to the quality of video games and gaming in general in the past couple of years, seeing some really awesome hyper-realistic graphics, seeing the rise of digital downloads and availability of games and these huge open world cooperative style experiences, there's still some things I like how it says the rise of digital uh, distribution, but like, that that's already here. Nothing's gonna replace physical media. Nothing. Nothing will ever replace that. It's not going anywhere. Sorry, sorry, Phil. Things that irk me. Even in the present day of 2016, there's some things about modern gaming that piss me off. And I wanted to take a little bit of time to rattle off some of the most annoying pet peeves about modern day gaming that I just need to get off my chest. Now these are my personal picks for the top 10 things that annoy me the most about modern gaming. You may completely disagree or maybe you agree. As you watch this video, feel free to leave a comment and let me know if you agree with me or if you think that I left something out. Without further ado, let's get started with my countdown. Number 10, day one required. By the way, I gotta applaud him a little bit. He did not say that. Got something they could just say that's okay. Like, he didn't say that. I'm At least I didn't catch it, but if he didn't, thank you, Phil. Let's get started. Installs and huge day one patches for brand new releases. Hey everyone, remember when you used to be able to just go to the store, pick up a game on release day, bring it home, pop it inside of your favorite console, and be playing that game within a matter of seconds? Guys, guys, see that? He wasn't swaying back and forth like he does in every single video that causes people to get sick. He, he's able to hold the camera straight now. Wow. Well, not anymore, because now, no matter what game you buy, no matter what console you're buying it for, it seems that more often than not, not only is there a pretty lengthy required install, and although PC users may say, well, we've had to always put up with that, so that's not a valid complaint, we've also got this new issue of giant required day one patches. Now, admittedly, if these patches are put in there to fix a simple issue, like maybe they find found a game crashing bug or a corruption issue with your game file save that would make your gameplay experience overall a very negative one, and they catch that, and they want to update that right away before you play the game on launch day, that's one thing. But we've seen an increasing and alarmingly increasing amount of day one patches Does anyone catch the uh, stupidity that he just said? That oh, these these day one patches should only happen if they want if they want to catch a game bug, but that's why there's day one patches. that are a gigabyte or more in excess of size that seems to be entire game modes, chunks of the game, and pieces of that game that were not present on the game disc. It seems more and more often in 2016 in the modern era when you go and buy a game at the store and you come home with it, you don't actually come home with the complete game on the disc, leading to a massive initial download before you can play it. Now. Admittedly, internet speeds are actually getting much better. So as faster But they also found a way where you but in the PlayStation 4, you can play the game as it's downloading in the background. I mean it, yeah, it depends on how far the download is, and you can just kinda you know, do do whatever, but it's just it's not that big of a deal. Like yeah, it's annoying. Like I, I do like when I can just put it pop in a game and have that work, but it's just it's not that big of a deal. Because I can fucking wait. It's not like, oh my god, download patches now. I'll, I'll find something else to do as I wait for the thing to fucking download. It's not that. It's not that big of an issue. 
internet gets, it's not that big of an issue. But the bottom line is, at least here in the United States where I live, we don't have universally great internet. A lot of people get stuck downloading these day one patches and updates for hours on end. And if you're someone with a busy life and you only have a couple hours a day to play, you're going to end up being really pissed off if everyone else gets to play a new game on release day, but you are sitting there in front of your loading screen waiting for the damned thing to download. Yeah, they'll just, but they'll just find something else to play. It's, it's, I I know a friend who do, who had who has these issues with downloads, and he just finds other stuff to do. I I know it's crazy, but it's it's his opinion. I mean, it's not completely dumb, but it's just kind of. Eh. It's kind of ridiculous, and it definitely is annoying for the modern gamer. Number nine: the inconsistency of digital releases. Oh my God! This. this this fucking shit right here. He whines so much about the uh the times when things get released. Like get get over it. Get over it. He he always wa uh whines about this. You know, I there's stuff I want to download on Tuesday that might not be up, so I wait. I might be a little bit impatient, but I fucking wait and I deal with it. I, I find something else to do. This isn't that big of an issue. This isn't even worth talking about, to be honest. This isn't the worst thing in modern gaming. I don't give a shit when how often things get updated through the store or whatever. It's... As we head into the modern era, we're going to find that more and more games are digital, meaning you're not going to be going to buy the physical disc anymore, but more than likely you're either going to buy it over the internet, over Xbox Live, over PSN. Or you're going to buy it physically. If you want to play the game immediately, go buy it. I mean, it's not, no one's forcing him to buy things digitally. I don't know why Phil feels the need that he's forced to buy things digitally. I mean, yeah, I get it that he wants to stay inside his house and doesn't want to leave. I get that, but it's not that big of a deal. And our Steam, or possibly you may also be getting an expansion DLC or something like that over the course of several months of a year. But what is up? with the distribution practices for this digital content. Why is it that nothing is consistent? I've played games that on release day came out at midnight my time. I've played games that on release day came out at 9 p.m. the day before. I've played games that aren't available until the morning of release day. I've played games that release on a Tuesday, games that release on a Wednesday, and games released on a Friday. Sometimes you get a DLC season pass and the DLCs aren't even consistent. One releases one day of the week at one time while another a couple months later releases a completely different day of the week at a different time. And it makes it almost impossible to plan out a consistent game play schedule for someone who actually needs to pick and choose the time frames that they can actually play a game. Yeah, I mean, these companies aren't thinking about people who have a YouTube channel and does this for a job. No, they don't think about that. They think about everyone who plays video games. Stupid developers. They should really be catering video games to the people who stream them and make money off them. <sighs> Come on. A modern case in point would be Street Fighter V, for which there have been several different DLC expansion characters released, as well as a full-on story mode. But every time there was a major update for this game, it released at a completely random day of the week, at a different time of the day, and there was almost no advance notice from Capcom when it would happen. So if you were a huge fan of Street Fighter V, and as a lot of people, they felt underwhelmed with the amount of content this game had at launch, and maybe you were waiting for additional content, you had no opportunity to really play plan out when you would be able to play it and nine times out of ten you just kind of had to jump in a lot of people just wait would wait after the year of the game came out i mean like everyone was already skeptical about, about capcom saying how they're not going to release the super street fighter 5 edition and all that so they're waiting a year to see what's going to happen with it see if there will be a super street fighter 5 or you know whatever have these people who, who didn't buy it or were just waiting until they uh they get everything released and everything out, then they're going to buy it. It's the same thing that they did with Mortal Kombat 10 and Batman Arkham Knight. People waited until the Game of the Year editions of those games came out. And at some point during the week and hope that it was available, a lot of the times it wasn't. Now to make matters even worse, it's not just DLCs that are an issue, but also the fact that sometimes certain consoles get certain DLCs ahead of others due to exclusive marketing arrangements. For example, until this past year, 
Call of Duty as a franchise always had its DLC expansions available on Xbox consoles about a month or so before they would release on Sony consoles. All of a sudden this past year that completely flip-flopped and the relationship is now that the DLCs are available for a month advance on PlayStation 4 before they're available on the Xbox One. That's ridiculous. If you spent the same amount of money as the person who bought that game on the opposite console, you should both have access to all of the same content at exactly the same time. I don't give a flying shit if Sony or Microsoft got a payday from Activision or if they paid Activision in order to get that advancement so they would sell more copies. It's a corrupt practice. It's not in the good natured business towards gamers and it just simply shouldn't happen. But it's a business. It, it's a business, Phil. These, these companies made these decisions because they own a business. And this is how business works. They had the that, that's the point of competition. This is supposed to stimulate competition between Sony and Microsoft. And also who fuck gives a shit about Call of Duty anymore? I mean like Ugh, whatever. And then, of course, the final straw that breaks the camel's back when it comes to digital releases, episodic games. Because if you take a look at the history of these episodic style games, for example, Telltale Games, who over the past several years have had huge series like The Walking Dead or The Wolf Among Us, amongst many others, they don't have any kind of a release schedule laid out at all. In fact, a lot of the times, they don't have consistency in the time frame between when the episodes release release and then they only give you a what, what a great uh thumbnail pick for that but who cares like to me when i had when i bought the season pass for for the walking dead i knew i had the episode i didn't care when exactly it came out i was like oh well it's coming and i and i own it day advance notice of when it's coming out so you may very well buy a season pass for one of these games and not even be aware that the next episode of the game released completely missing out on it and having to play it at a later date because you just didn't get that information but like anyone who bought a season pass to that game would know because guess what phil you spent money like the information is already out there you have to do this thing called research i mean like when I had the season pass for The Walking Dead, I made it, I made it my goal to see when each episode was coming out. Like I, I kept checking, I kept checking the game, I kept checking the store, whatever. I kept looking for it. I was never surprised that oh, there was a new episode this week. Like that, that's fucking stupid. Like it's so lazy. And he wants all these developers to bend over backwards for him, like, come on. Right now, I'm actually in the middle of playing Hitman. Now, this game decided to take that classic formula of sneaking around and doing assassinations in an open world, but change it from being a retail-style game release to a DLC-style episodic release game. I couldn't tell you when the next episode's coming out, how many episodes are available. They've been releasing bonus episodes that are only available to play within a certain time frame and then they go away it's just a horrendous fucking mess now that now that's a little weird that 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 to me i i would i kind of want to look into because i don't know if that's exactly true if it is that is kind of shitty but they're probably gonna re-release them on on the desk anyway to be honest once they're all done with it they're probably gonna include it as like a you know on, on the disc and for everyone to play it and then those who already downloaded it will just keep it I'm sure that's how they're, they're, they're gonna do it. People who are buying digital content should be allowed to plan out and get the same kind of information as people who go buy that game at a retail store. Just because it's a digital release doesn't give a game developer the right to basically be wishy-washy about when it'll be released and to not have a kind of commitment to the consumer on when they can expect what they've paid for. It's absolutely ridiculous, it's not acceptable, and the digital distribution of content needs to improve drastically. Number 8, the availability or lack thereof of nice packaging and or nice boxes and presentation when you buy a physical copy of- Well, of course he picks uh, the Wii U for this, but the thing is that a lot of people care about trees. Uh, I don't know why it's, you know, silly that we care about trees, I guess, but, you know, a lot of companies have been cutting, cutting down on that because they just want to save some trees game in the modern era. Hey everyone, remember when you used to be able to go to your favorite gaming store, pick up a game on release date, come home and unbox it? 
Remember the awesome amount of stuff that used to be inside of a game box and the quality that would go on the artwork and all the descriptions of the game on the outside of the box. Sometimes you would get an amazing full color, multiple page pamphlet of instructions and supplemental materials. Oh, this this skit is like very boring and it just, it just goes on and it doesn't really need to be here. That could serve as a cool reading source so you actually get immersed in that game universe before you ever boot the game. Hell, even some classics as far back as the PS1 and 2 era came with giant fold-out full-color maps and things that just made it feel like that game developer really appreciated your dollar. Well, say goodbye to that, because in the modern era, oh, it's uh. so damned bare bones, nine times out of ten, I ask myself why I bothered to drive to my local game store to get the game to begin with. There's nothing... So you can play it and not have to wait for the game to download? Like, you just complained a few points ago why you would... Thing in these boxes some of them have nothing but the game disc and a little warning pamphlet that may say something about epilepsy or something like that hell some of them don't even have epilepsy yeah that just just something like that just silly epilepsy of that pamphlet and i'm gonna be honest sometimes i'm actually surprised when i open a game box to even find the game disc in there because there's so little that's put into the effort of packing these games and giving them presentation in a look at my hands physical version anymore half the time i'm surprised that they even remembered to put the game inside this wow. is something that obviously is a pet peeve and it's a nitpick but hey back in the day we were treated to a complete kind of presentation when we bought a video game so when we laid down our hard-earned money we felt like we were not only getting the game but we were getting an experience with it collectible swag now it's hard to get absolutely anything it's well it's like it's like buying a movie now when you buy a movie on disc you get really nothing in there, uh, but the case itself, you could argue, is collectible because, think about it, eventually, eventually the company that prints out these cases and all that are just going to stop. They're going to be like, okay, no more cases for this game, we don't need to, to manufacture them anymore, and guess what? The physical copies will be actually valuable at some point. I mean, it's just... <sighs> okay. Few and far between where you'll buy a game and you'll even get a collector's card inside the box as some kind of a thank you. It's a shame because let's be honest, a lot of things are going digital and less and less people actually are having big gameplay collections. And it's, That's not why they're cutting down. It's because it costs more money probably and you know, the economy isn't doing, isn't like the best. And even that, that aside, it's also killing a lot of trees that they probably were like, hey, we should not kill a lot of trees. Yeah, I, I would agree that I did like, and I do miss, the um, physical stuff that came in with game cases, but uh, it, it's not make or break it, break it for me. I like owning physical media more because I own it, and I have it. I don't have to, like, if I have to delete uh, storage on my console, then it's like, I gotta delete the game. Which game am I gonna delete? Oh, and it becomes more of an issue. If I have it on disc, it's like... You know, I, I will always have it. ...physical game collections anymore, and that is a sad thing. It was a huge part of gaming culture for quite a long time, and unfortunately it seems that most game publishers are just doing away with that whole thing completely, knowing that eventually everything's going to be digital distribution, and that's just sad. Yeah, okay. Alright, so that was just a taste of a few of the things that I find as the worst things of modern gaming. Let me know what you think in the comments if you... I'll tell you right now. I guarantee, guarantee he has the other two parts finished. He planned to have one video. Like, he was planning on doing three separate videos. It, it wasn't like, oh, I guess I'll do three separate videos. No, no, he planned to have three separate videos to begin with. What a load of shit. Agree or disagree? And also, let's see if you can guess some of the upcoming ones that are going to finish off this top 10 countdown. Thanks for watching part 1, everyone, and if you enjoyed it, please give this video a like here on YouTube as well as check the video description for links to my Loot Crate discount code, which works on any new subscription to Loot Crate, in addition to my Patreon. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon for the conclusion of the worst things of modern gaming. Peace out. The worst things of modern gaming. Uh, let's look at the at the uh, comments. We left out number eleven, DSP Gaming.
So many false claims here. I'm not even going to waste my time. Thumbs down. Pay to win gaming. Fuck that. Sucks that Phil has to make these kind of videos to keep KO Gaming thriving. Constant negativity sells, I guess. No, it's just effort, and he doesn't really put any effort. Um, but whatever. I mean, these comments are kind of dumb to begin with. Because, yeah, he, he runs three channels, and there's a lot of dumb in that. Let's, let's look at the replies. We'll never get another hit, like, hold on. Four replies, so two there. One, two, yeah, okay. We'll never get another hit like Homefront the Revolution, though. Laugh out loud, sorry. Well, there are more bad things than good, good he may see. It is odd if you ask me. And you know, you know this how? Did you expect Homefront to get the uh, views it did? Only uh, one thing Phil is great at is making on point reviews. It's completely possible for him. To have another viral video, yeah, okay, that video is viral. Mm -hmm. No campaign, online only games, worst one. Yeah, that is pretty bad. Present on the game disc, uh, don't you mostly get games digitally now? <laughs> Supply drops, uh, number one, YouTubers. Uh, whatever happened to Bob, Never he never does kill gaming these days. He doesn't need to make... Uh, the uh, you just needed to make this video, huh? Cause you don't, uh, you don't do enough whining as is. Online lag. A getting my ass kicked on while I'm not doing anything and pressing buttons. Uh, I love this. I love the edits of you opening the empty key game cases. Ha ha ha. And then there's Witcher game package. Okay, digital is my biggest gripe. I just don't understand why people don't. Want a physical copy that they uh, can resell on eBay or trade in later? Uh, well, digital is not going anywhere. I agree with the first two concerns that you addressed. The eight, the eight issue is a bit of a stretch, but that's just me. Lack of originality uh, for me. All the uh, games uh, with the okay. Number eight. What was number eight? Overall, a very negative. That seems that you don't. It's not that big of an issue. To play inconsistency of digital releases. Number nine, the inconsistent theme. Consistent. I released out of fable to. Sorry, I just want to completely underwhelmed with. See what it's number eight. A lot of the times, it, I don't remember. For example, on the flip flop console, you need Activision, and it just simply shouldn't happen. These episodic style games, from example, tell episodic kind of a release schedule later of when it's coming out and having to play it at Come a on. Now, this game decided to take that classic game frame and then they have information unacceptable and, and or nice boxes and presentation when you buy a physical copy of a game in the modern era. Hey everyone, remember when you used to be able to go to your favorite game? I wish you put like the, the numbers that that are in here like oh this is 10 through 7 or 10 through 8 so warning pet peeve and it collect and that is a sad I, I guess it's only 8 it's weird a the availability yeah okay well that's it for this video um let's see so i'm going to do my t uh, things I don't like about modern gaming. Number ten, uh, I don't like. I don't like the lack of of original games, like or games that take risks. Like uh, for example, we had No More Heroes on the Wii. We had uh, like Shadow of the Colossus. Those kind of games. Those games that took risks, like Okami, uh, all that stuff that. You no, know, you, you would kind of expect now it's like every game is the same. There is some different games out there, but like a majority of them are basically games you've seen already, and I don't like that. Number nine. Um, I don't like. Actually, no, fuck, I'm not gonna do it. Never mind. Uh, I, I, would have to, I would have to think of ones, and like, I, I don't really want to.
<laughs> do that. But, um, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching these videos, and, uh, hope to see you when he, whenever he uploads part two. Uh, when he does that, I'll definitely do a video on his part dose. See you guys next time. Oh, last thing, last thing before I go. Brain fart. If you want to see me endure a game that DSB has played, be yeah, that this is how you don't play, or raw gameplay, whatever, feel free to, let, to send your suggestions. I know I'm still doing the Almighty Challenge, but if you have a game you want me to endure, feel free to, to send me your, your suggestions. Um, I'll pick the ones I, I do want to do, but if you have ones you're like, you know what? I want to see you endure this, and I'll, and I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do some uh, recommendations or suggestions, and we'll go from there. So other than that, now I will officially say goodbye. Thanks for watching. Um, that image back there is my, is my uh, channel picture for my main channel. You go check out if you want to see non-DSP videos that I, that I do. I do do videos that are not about him. So feel free to check that out. See you guys next time.